Hello everyone, semi-amateur comic creator Aaron Walther here with a short video about Planet Comic Con 2017. For those that don't know, Planet Comic Con is the biggest convention in Kansas City, making it one of the biggest conventions in the whole Midwest area. I've been going to this show for five years now and always have a pretty good time. This year, I decided to bring a little camera with me to get some footage of the convention. I live in St. Louis, so it's a short four hour drive to Kansas City for me. I didn't get much sleep the night before because I was up late rocking out with the Eagles of Death Metal and Mastodon. And despite being rainy and dreary all weekend, it was a pretty easy drive across Missouri, which also gave me time to catch up on some essential audiobook listening. Penguin Random House Audio presents Based on a True Story, a memoir by Norm MacDonald. Read by Norm MacDonald with Tim O'Halloran. Dedicated to Charles Manson. Oh. Not that one. Oh, no. The first thing you may notice is that Planet Comic Con is huge, and there are loads of things to do and see, including numerous vendors, celebrities, panel discussions, game rooms, and so on. But if you're expecting me to document all of that in this video, I am afraid you're in for disappointment. All of that stuff is well and good, but when I go to a comic convention, I'm mostly interested in talking to comic creators. And one thing I love about Planet Comic Con is that the artist alley is filled to the rim with actual comic creators, ranging from working professionals to self-published independents to legends of the industry. This year there was one industry legend that I made sure to take the time to meet, prolific X-Men writer Chris Claremont. Now, I don't usually like to stand in long lines to get comics signed, but I just couldn't pass up the chance to meet him and get my copy of Uncanny X-Men 213 signed. Now when I'm at a comic convention pretending to be a comic creator, as I do, I spend most of my time behind a table trying to convince people to take a look at my books. And believe it or not, that can be exhausting. But this year, I managed to get out from behind the table and hang out with lots of friends that I somehow managed to make over the years. There are loads of talented writers and artists in the Kansas City area, and even more that travel from surrounding states. Of course, I never have enough time to talk to everyone, but here are a few people that tolerated me shoving a camera into their face. First up is a friend of mine named Levi Hoffmeyer. He has an amazing book that he writes and draws called Mayflower, and I forced him to do a little pitch for the camera, so I encourage everybody to check it out. So, uh, I don't know, Levi, you wanna like do a do a pitch for the for the camera if you think you're ready to, yeah. to hit the video world? Sure. <laughs> uh, Mayflower is about a group of people trying to build the first faster than light ship and it really explores the motivations of how those characters came, come together and why they would want to leave a fully colonized solar system. And it tries to kind of rewind on a lot of like pre-established sci-fi concepts to kind of show the magic of them, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. Sounds cool. It is uh, absolutely one of my favorite books that I've picked up at a comic convention. Thank you. It really is. And while I dodged copious amounts of Deadpool cosplayers, I made my way over to friends Scott and Brian to hear about this new book they've got called Final Street. Hey, I'm uh, writer and creator Scott Schmidt. I'm the artist, Brian Atkins. All right. The artist. The, the, the artist formerly known as... I'm the only one here as a turn <laughs> The one. The one artist they have at comic book conventions. <laughs> so, what, what is this uh, new book? I've been seeing this posted on Facebook. Yeah, this is our uh, our new project called Final Street, and it is a retro beat em up comic book. So um, it takes its inspiration from uh, classic video games like Double Dragon and uh, Streets of Rage, and uh, we're going with this plot line that where most of those games they usually have the girlfriend who's the one who's kidnapped and the boyfriend has to go out and uh, chase everybody down and beat them up. 
Um, this time it's the boyfriend who gets kidnapped, and the girlfriends have to go out and uh, wipe the city clean of gangs to get him back. So that is what we're working with right now. That sounds cool. It's very exciting. As a, I'm a classic gamer myself. Like I like a lot of beat 'em ups and, and fighter games. So I feel like there's a lot of uh, a lot of potential, a lot of fun stuff you can do with that in a comic book story. Yeah, for sure. Like uh, one of the things that Brian's done is like the enemy designs. Oh yeah, that's that's been one of the things that's been a, a lot of fun. I don't know where the pitch is. Neither. Oh, too. <laughs> Yeah, so like pretty much what we did was we built three enemy types, and they kind of like in those games they would reskin them and just put like different costumes. Maybe mm -hmm. like one guy has a mohawk, one guy has like you know pompadour or whatever. So we took the we three classic enemy types and then did three versions of each enemy, and those are like all the enemies for stage one or issue one. And uh, so that was a lot of fun, just going back to like the biker gangs, and then these guys are more like rockers. And, and uh, also been having a lot of fun doing stuff like, you know, they're on the subway and they find some food and then just eat that quickly, <laughs> you know, get some, some health back. And then each issue uh, basically ends in what is more or less a boss fight, so we get to design a unique character who the they get to face off in the end, and uh, this is who we're working with for the end of uh, stage one. His name is Al Boa. He's a former bodybuilder and uh, now finds himself as leader of this uh, kind of rough and tumble street gang. So Called the Bare Knucklers. Yeah, which uh, Bare Knucklers is sort of a reference to um, uh, a Japanese name of a series uh, for another beat em up series and that's kind of also a thing we're doing with it we're just throwing as many like homages and tributes to that entire genre so there's tons of easter eggs so if you're a fan of that genre like you're going to pick up on a lot of really cool stuff and, and like be like oh i remember that and you know things yeah. like that so. but even if you're not a fan it's just a great like rip roaring like full throttle people getting punched in the face comic so yeah. like <laughs> punches in the wrong? faces everywhere like someone's getting punched almost every page which is kind of <laughs> what we wanted well that's how those games are you know oh it's just super light on the story yeah right. it's all punching yeah <laughs> yep. so that, and, you know that's and i think great. as the as the story progresses we'll have more moments to really delve into the characters and stuff and that's sort of, but really trying to hit that flavor of the genre like especially with this first one, so it should be really fun. Sounds great. Now, you guys, are you guys kickstarting the first issue? Yeah, um, so we actually just launched our Kickstarter. It's a couple days in, and um, we've got the book almost finished on um, the production, and we funded that aspect. So right now we're just going for a short goal to just get print issues done so that we can produce the book, bring them shows, and get them out to as many people as possible. So from there, then we can keep going down the line to finish the four-issue series. So. Yeah, all you gotta do is just uh, go to Kickstarter, look up Final Street, and first, first thing pops up. Yeah, first thing. <laughs> all it's right. the only one as far as I know. So. Well, that sounds great, guys. I'll put a link in the description cool. for the Kickstarter. Awesome, man. Scott, how you doing? Doing good. How's it going, man? Oh, it's going all right. Going on. Got some shots of your book here. Cyclops action going on. Yeah. Oh, that is cool. But it doesn't say anything bad up here. <laughs> nope, it's just the movies I need to see. <laughs> it's like your list of enemies list. You accidentally yeah. just left it out in yeah, the open. Yeah, these are the people I need to <laughs> No. That's cool. So what are you working on? Yeah. I mean, late, lately. I know you. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, so, yeah, I've got Night Smoke going on. This guy's volume one. Uh, this guy's volume two just came out, uh, you know, uh, end part of last year. I'm working on volume three right now. So, nightsmokecomic.com. There we go. Progress, all that fun stuff. Sweet, we'll put the link up. But I wouldn't be a very good friend if I didn't properly introduce my table mates, Sarah Rude, artist and colorist for Zero's Heroes, and Ed Pickford, artist for The Birdlander. And tabling next to us is Alex Mayday, editor-in-chief of Pond Scum Comics, and Kevin Bertatelli, co-founder and president of Rats and Crows Publishing, who is publishing The Birdlander. Let's see what else they have, though. You gotta make it wild, make a scene. Yeah, there is more juice to do on Porno than YouTube, actually. That's exactly right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. That would be the funniest to do, like, just two shirtless guys on a car. <laughs> <laughs> Booth <laughs> dudes. Painted with, like, sports fans, and have, like, Madame Geisha painted on your face or like that, and no one painted, like, Stephen Harrison or something, you know? <laughs> uh, 
So we Hit have Bongo City Rumble, which is one that I write. It's about a man who submits a demo tape that he made to a local radio station, Let's and the it. evil DJ villain steals it and claims it's his, so him and his buddy, a mutant cat, are on an adventure to get it back in a wild city. We have Charmer, who's about a lady trying to take out a cult that raised her to be a sacrifice. It's written by Bill Williams. Yeah, taco hat. We have Mass, it's written by Danny Warner. It's about a post-apocalyptic society that's been split into two different people. We have people with Mass and people without Mass, and it's all just about how this society uh, fell and became the way it was. Sane Six is a high-energy, uh, thrilling heist comic. We kind of pitch it as if Quentin Tarantino wrote Fast and Furious, but that's how we do that. And then uh, we have Slime by Lucas, all the way from Poland. It's a wrestling anthology. Just wild, gnarly, funny stuff. Cool. And then last what's, but not least, what's this book over here? We have The Birdlander by uh, you, Aaron. Some, some nobodies. Yeah. <laughs> like five person on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. Not even more. It's a cool book. It also takes place in a post apocalyptic society, but it's about a girl trying to track down the legend of her father, who's the Birdlander. And, uh, who this mysterious guy is, and if she could find him. That is our books Sounds for Rats cool. and Crow yeah. and Kevin, you came all the way from where? Canada. Canada. French Canada, Tree Reverse, <laughs> in a little town nearby Montreal. I hear that French Canada is the best Canada. Is that true? They are, they are. They wear taco hat and they really love to smell and big for <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> What's, uh, what are you guys' favorite food when you come to America there, Kevin? Taco Bell. <laughs> that was my Ryan Polito impression. <laughs> oh, right on. Right you on. You should say some French for all the viewers. Really awesome. Je sais mec. Yeah. What's that? That means bon appétit. Oh, okay. like, oh, good. Oh, yeah. Have a nice day. Stuff like that. Oh, really? Cool. It's like really welcome. Sounds like a plan. Yes, sir. Nothing, I'm just looking. All right, keep looking. Get some B-roll. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, I'm trying to remember what colors. Captain America? He's the red, shield. white, and blue. I know that, but I'm trying to have the shield <laughs> part. I know it's got, is it red rings around it, right? Oh, wait. I have, it's blue and red. Jordan, you want to pitch your comic, The Fist? Okay. My comic, it's called The Fist. Uh, it's about this guy who punches stuff. That is the best pitch I've ever heard. <laughs> and it's silly, and it doesn't make any sense. It's amazing. And and it's completely off the rails. It's off the rails. action. It's been described as there's more twists than the bag of pretzels. That's a good one, yeah. I uh, saw, um, what, what was the comic set? Comic Bastards? Yeah. They, they they gave it pretty favorable reviews. Yeah, that's said it was cool. like the best best that's indie comic of uh, ever. To ever probably maybe just two sixteen, but I will go with ever. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. I think it made me happy. Did they do another one recently too? Uh huh. That's very cool. Yeah. And that pretty much sums up my weekend. I suppose I could go into further details about all the gossip between creators, celebrity disasters, as well as my financial records, tax returns, and all the other juicy bits that go into tabling at a comic convention, but I'm not gonna. All in all, it was a hectic, busy, and stressful weekend. But despite being a trollish shut-in for most of the year, I do enjoy meeting up with friends and fellow comic creators for a chat now and then. And I was happy to see that, despite the never-ending rain, it didn't keep the cosplayers away. Planet Comic Con, Kansas City. I'll see you next year.
Hey, Macho Man, give me an oh yeah.